This video is a quick overview of the three measures of center of a data set, and they are the mean, the median, and the mode. And this falls under topic four, stats and prob, in the AI course, under the subtopic of descriptive statistics. So when we have a set of data, let's say it's the house prices in a large city like New York, or maybe the average ages of a student uh, in, a, in a state high school, or the number of goals scored by a soccer player in a season. We often want to understand what the center point is. We also wanna know what the, say, the minimum and the maximum is, but we mainly want to understand where the center lies. So for example, what's the average house price in New York? Or what is the average age or the middle age of this group of students? Often in statistics, we're really striving to understand what the center is. And there are three different ways that we can assess the center, and they are the mean, the median, and the mode. And they're all quite different, and they all have different um, positives and negatives. So let's just quickly go through them. The mean here, that is the average of the values, and this is the most common. Uh, and if you're in the um, diploma program, the hour course, you've probably come across average quite a bit already, and you often, uh, average is the most commonly quoted measure of center. So the average age or the, or the average house price. Um, the positives are that it takes all the values into account. Uh, one negative, though, is that it is easily influenced by outliers. And the most sort of common example of that is if I'm with a group of friends in a restaurant, let's say five friends, and we all have, let's say, a couple of hundred dollars or a couple of, or, or a couple of thousand dollars in our bank account, let's say, we're, 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 we're five young people. And let's say Bill Gates walks in the restaurant. And then we ask, okay, what's the average amount of money in the bank accounts in this restaurant? and Bill Gates has billions, let's say. Well, the average amount of money in our bank accounts is now a couple hundred million, but that's not a good description of the center because me and my friends all still only have a hundred, couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars. So it's easily influenced by outliers. And likewise for house prices can be easily influenced by say the mansion that's on the corner block, um, which is why house prices are often quoted as the median. So let's move on to the median now. That is the median, sorry, the middle value when ordered in ascending order. So from smallest to largest, we pick the middle number. Uh, it only takes the middle value into account. That's a, it can be considered both a positive and a negative, but one positive of the median is that it is not influenced by those real outliers like Bill Gates' bank account or the mansion on the corner block. And the final one, which is probably the least uh, used, is the mode, which is the value occurring the most. So it only takes into account common values, but one positive is that is not influenced by outliers. Okay, let's go through two quick examples here. We're going to find the mean median mode for these two data sets here. So the first one is just a very straightforward, uh, we have six, um, six values here, three, four, four, six, eight, ten, and we're going to find these three items here. So to find the mean, let's find the mean first, or the average. Uh, our calculator can find this, uh, and a lot of the questions in the question bank do show you how to find the mean using a stat calculation called one variable statistics. So I recommend going to the descriptive statistics page and finding out how to do that. But for these six values here, mean is just simply found by adding the values up and dividing by how many values there are. So if we use our calculator, I have here, I've added the, all the values up and then I divide by how many values there are and that gives me my mean. So that is the answer as a fraction and as a decimal, the mean will be 5.83 rounded to its three sig fig. So 5.83. Let's look at the median now. That is the middle value when ordered. Now these numbers here are in ascending order. It's very important that for the, for the median, um, unlike the mean and the mode, it's not important for those two, but for the median, it's important that you order them in smallest to largest. So in this case here, these numbers already are. Now there are six values. The median will sit, I can't quite see a middle value here. Um, if the 10 wasn't there, let's just say for argument's sake the 10 wasn't there, the middle value would be clear. It would be this four, because there's two numbers to the left and two numbers to the right of it. However, when there is an even number, in this case here, there are six numbers, so six numbers, the way that we find the medianth number, not the median itself, but the medianth number, is doing this quick calculation. We add one to the numbers, number of values that we have, and then divide by two, and that will be seven over two, which in this case here is 3.5, so the 3.5th number. So if we count across, let's find the 3.5th number. One, two, three, 
four, so the median will sit in between of these two here. So I'd like to draw a circle around it. And the way that we find the middle is to actually take the average of the two. So if we use our calculator, we find the average by adding them and then dividing by two. I mean, we could, we could probably do that one in our head. That's, that's quite simple, but I just want to show the calculation there. So the average of those two middle numbers will be five. So our median in this data set here is five. So median is equal to five. Finally, the mode, very straightforward, this one. Which value out of these six values occurs the most? Well, there's only one value, which is four, that occurs more than once. So therefore our mode will be four. Okay, let's go to example two now. A little bit harder this one. We have a frequency table. So this table summarizes, say, the ages of a group of young people all the way from, say, zero up to 29. So, so all considered young. And we have seven people in this group that are aged between zero and nine, five people in this group aged between 10 and 19, and four between 20 and 29. So how many people do we have in total here? Seven plus five is 12, plus four is 16. So we have 16 people in this group. We don't know their exact ages. This table actually doesn't tell us that. But we do know which, and the correct word here is class, which, at which, what age class they are in. So for example, these seven are in the class of zero to nine. So to find the mean, when we have a frequency table with classes, we actually can't find the exact mean because we actually don't know the exact values, but we can do a pretty accurate estimate. And the way that we do that is to assign the mid interval to each of these classes. So the mid interval for this first class is actually gonna be 4.5. I would call this mid interval. So it's halfway between zero and nine. If you're not sure how I got that, you just add the two boundaries. So zero and nine and divide by two and they'll get 4.5. The next mid interval will be 14.5. Again, can be found by doing 10 plus 19 divided by two. And the final mid interval will be 24.5. So what we are going to do is to just assume that all seven young people in this first class here had an age of 4.5. That's probably the best estimate we could do. I don't wanna say that all seven were zero, and I don't want to say that all seven were nine. It's probably going to be sp spread out between the class. So let's just say, let's just for estimation purposes, say that they are all 4.5 years old. Once we have our mid intervals, we can actually use our calculator here to actually find the mean estimated age of these 16 people. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we go into the statistics section, which is this green icon here. I'm going to label my first column A for age and my second column F for frequency, and I'm gonna enter my mid interval. So 4.5, 14.5, and 24.5, and then the associated frequency. So seven people, five people, four people. Now let's go to the next column and perform a one variable statistic calculation. Stat, calculation, one variable, my X list is my age, my frequency list is my frequency, hit okay, and it tell, this first number here is the estimated average age, which is my mean, 12.6. Okay, so that's my estimated mean. Let's now go to the median. I'm looking for the median value, my median age here when ordered in, an, in ascending order. So I have seven people aged zero to nine. So if I was to sort of draw them out, I have zero to nine as my first person, zero to nine as my second person, dot, 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 seven times. And then my eighth will be 10 to 19, 10 to 19, etc. five times, and then an additional four for 20 to 29. Now my middle number can be found, just like we did before in, exercise, in, in example one, my middle number can be found by doing 16 plus one over two, and that will be 17 over two, which will be 8.5. So my median is actually the 8.5th number, which will be, if I did this zero to nine seven times, and then 10 to 19 an additional five times, the median will be this class here. So my answer here, my median class, I can't give an exact answer because I actually don't know the exact ages. I'm gonna give it as a median class, and that will be uh, 10 to 19. 
Finally, my mode class, and we, we, we call that the modal class, so which class is most frequently occurring. I can just simply look down the frequency column, see which one has the highest value, that is zero to nine. So out of this group of 16, the class that occurred the most, the modal class, will be the zero to nine. So modal class is equal to zero to nine. Okay, that concludes our video on mean, median, mode. And just to summarize again, these three statistics are ways that we can describe the center point of a range of data.